In this video, I'm going to show you how to take actual measurements from your equipment and put them into Beersmith. And we're getting started right now. Hey everyone, Brian from Short Circuit of Brewers. Our channel is all about electric brewing. We do electric brew days, we do product reviews, and how-to instructional videos just like this one. If you're interested in electric brewing or want to see some product reviews, consider subscribing. Hit the bell so you'll be notified when we put out new content. So we've gone through most of the types of brewing systems in our electric brewing series, and I'll put a card up here so that if you have not seen that series, you can go take a look at it. But in building a system, you are going to have some issues where you need to calculate for different vessel losses, losses in your boil kettle, losses in your rims tube, losses in your Herms coil, losses in your HLT, your mash tun. All those vessels have a little bit of liquid that they leave behind. So in this video, I want to show you guys how to take some actual real world measurements and put those into Beersmith. So a couple things you're going to need to do these measurements. You're going to need a pitcher, and I generally like to use a one gallon pitcher just because it's easier to make the measurements. You're going to need a scale that will measure in pounds and ounces, and then you also need a scale that's going to be heavy enough to measure whatever your mash tun is, because that does make a difference when it comes to how your brewing software works, at least it does with Beersmith, because Brad Smith, when he designed it, he calculated that if a mash tun weighs a certain amount of weight and it's made out of a certain material, that it will absorb a certain amount of heat. And then that in turn will help you calculate your mash in temperature. Now, whether you're using an electric system or a regular, you know, propane system, the same principle holds true. So let's jump into it and we'll discuss about measuring your boil kettle first. So what I did was I filled my boil kettle up to just over the level of the dip tube. And, and that is important because you want to be able to create a, a siphon so that you can get all of the liquid, as much liquid as possible out of the boil kettle when you take the measurement. Now, I would also recommend using a hose because of the fact you want to be able to maintain that siphon even when the water drops down below the level of the dip tube. So what I did was I began draining the mash tun with my one gallon container as a measurement device and drained off each gallon as I went down. And then my kettle only goes down to, I think, three gallons. So once I got to three gallons, I was sure to use my pitcher to capture the one gallon increments of liquid from there. So once I got to the, the last gallon, I used the hose that created the siphon. And what I did was I drained the kettle into the one gallon pitcher. And then I weighed that on the scale and took a measurement of how much it weighed. That is important because we do know the weight of water. So by taking a weight measurement on your pitcher, you can calculate exactly how much in volume that is in tenths of a gallon, which is what Beersmith accepts. So at the same time, when I was conducting that measurement, I took my counterflow chiller and all of the hoses associated with it and hooked them up to my pump and the kettle and ran water through all of those through the counterflow chiller, through the pump, through the hoses. And then when I was done with that, I disconnected the hoses from the boil kettle and I drained all of the liquid from the hoses, the chiller, everything into the one gallon pitcher and measured the weight of that. And that'll give us the loss from the chiller and the hoses and everything like that. Your mash tun is gonna be the same way. Fill it up to a mark or a level that's just above the dip tube. And then you're going to Drain it off one gallon at a time until you get to the last gallon. Be sure to calibrate your scale before you go to measure that last gallon if your scale has an auto off because <laughs> you can get to a situation where you've got the kettle full of liquid, but your scale is shut off and it won't be zeroed out. So if you don't want to do all that math, just make sure before you capture that last gallon from your vessel that you've turned on your scale and zeroed it out with the, with the one gallon pitcher on it. So um, Then from there, I went and measured the Herms coil. And the way that I did that was just hooked a hose up to it, filled it up with water with a hose, and then drained all of that liquid into a pitcher, took a measurement, documented that. And then uh, on the HLT, same way as the boil kettle, all you do with that is you just basically fill it up to a level that you can measure and then drain it down into your one gallon container. Capture the last amount that will come out of that vessel into the one gallon pitcher and weigh it, document those measurements. One other tip I will give you is that if you want to, you can actually fill your hoses, all of your hoses that you use in your brewing system up with your sink or whatever vessel it is you want to connect them to and measure those individually just by filling up the hose, pour it into the pitcher and then weigh that on the scale. And then you can come up with what, how much liquid all of your hoses hold. And then I'm going to show you how to calculate all those measurements using a tool that I created 
to find out what your tenths of a gallon are so that you can input that into either Beersmith or any other brewing software. So with that, let's head up to the computer with Beersmith. Okay, so we're up at the computer now and I'll go ahead and open up Beersmith and we'll take a look at how to set up your equipment profile. So you're gonna open the program, you're gonna go into Profiles, Equipment, and then you'll go to Add Equipment, the little icon up here indicated by a kettle. And you can use this equipment screen here, or you can actually duplicate one of the equipment profiles that already exist. I'm gonna walk you through the equipment wizard just because it's a little bit easier if somebody's doing it for the first time. So we'll click on the equipment wizard bottom down at the bottom button down at the bottom. And we're gonna call this one Herms because that's the system that we're talking about here. And it looks like uh, batch volume, I like it to be about 11 gallons. So that gives me a little bit of extra in the fermenter for Trube and whatnot. And you know, I don't have to worry about putting a bunch of uh, yeast and, and stuff in my, in my kegs. Um, and then uh, fermenter loss, I usually calculate about a half a gallon on that. If, obviously you can put more in there if you're doing IPAs or if you're doing you know, real hoppy beers and you're gonna do some dry hopping, so you, you may wanna adjust that to match whatever style of beer you're doing. Um, top off water, that is going to be for somebody that's doing like an extract batch, that's not gonna be something we're gonna mess with. Um, now when we get to the loss to trub and chiller, that's actually talking about uh, the trube at the bottom of the kettle and in the chiller. And we took some measurements earlier in the video, and let's take a look. I took the measurements down and put those in a text file here and I'll show you the tool that I made to help us with that. So because of the fact that we're looking at the boil kettle and the chiller that are leaving the true behind, let's plug these numbers into the tool that I made and let's see what we come up with. So we've got six pounds and 3.1 ounces. So according to my calculations over here, that's saying what's left in the kettle is going to be 0.26 gallons. And let's put in the chiller number, which was one pound and 14.7 ounces. So we'll put that number in. And that looks like it's gonna give us a loss of 0.23 gallons. So we've gotta add those two together. So it'll be basically 0.49 almost. We can go ahead and round it up to a half a gallon uh, as far as the amount lost to the chiller and the trub in the bottom. So uh, 0.5, now remember that that number is gonna be just for water. So again, same thing with the fermenter. If you're gonna do a hoppy beer and you don't have some kind of a, a troop dam or whatever, you may wanna go ahead and increase that. But just for starting out sake until you get the feel of your system, you can use that calculator to calculate those two numbers. Like I said, you know, feel, feel free to change those numbers if you want based on what style of beer you're, you're brewing. If you're brewing like a uh, wit beer or something like that and there's not a lot of hops in it then obviously you could leave it that way and probably be okay if you are brewing a you know double ipa or something you're going to be doing a bunch of war pulling then you probably would want to increase that up to maybe even a gallon so uh, we'll click next and that will take us to our boil time we're going to leave that at 60 minutes um, how much uh, wort boils off per hour uh, half a gallon is what it's set at by default um, i find that my system is usually about 0. 0.6 gallons and the way you can measure that if you want to take a real measurement, you can actually fill your kettle with water to over, over the element or, you know, if you're doing propane, fill it up to like four or five gallons and then go ahead and, and bring it to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil, let it boil for 15 minutes and then turn off the gas or power immediately, cover it up and let it sit until it chills down and uh, measure how much of a loss you had in that 15 minutes and then you'll multiply that by four and that will give you what you're looking for. Um, you want to leave the calculate boil volume automatically alone. That is something that is calculated by the system. Um, looks like the, uh, for over 20 gallons, you're going to put in, uh, you're going to leave it at hundred percent unless you're boiling over 20 gallons. Um, whirlpool steep hop utilization. That is actually, uh, you can calculate that in a recipe when you make it, but you definitely do want to check this that says estimate hop utilization in whirlpool, because if you're whirlpooling at a, a high enough temperature, you're definitely going to summarize some of the uh, alpha acids in there and definitely create some more bitterness so that you want to have that checked. Um, next, you're looking at your brew house efficiency. 72% is a pretty good place to start. Um, mash ton volume, my mash ton is 20 gallons, so I'll go ahead and put 20 gallons in there. 
And mass ton weight is used for estimating thermal properties, as I said earlier in the video. And yes, you actually do want to take the mash ton and put it on a scale and weigh it. Um, as you can see from the video, mine weighs 27.6 pounds. So we'll put 27.6 pounds in there. And as far as the type of material, it is a stainless uh, HL or mash ton. So I'm going to put 0.12 in there per the recommendations on the screen. And then uh, I don't need to add any mash to any... Um, additions to compensate for you know any kind of volume underneath of there um, dead space in the mash ton we're going to get that number from the screen the tool here that i made and we'll put that number in so the mash ton is down here we're going to put six pounds three ounces in there and that's going to that's telling me that i'm leaving 0.26 gallons behind so we'll go ahead and put that number in for the lauder ton dead space so 0.26 and we're gonna click OK. And that will actually put together your profile. One of the things that you wanna note is that if you, in your lotter ton, if you have a Herm system such as I do, bring your calculator back up and we're gonna to have to calculate the losses in the Herms or RIMS tube if you have a RIMS tube. And the Herms coil on mine, it actually calculated out to two pounds, 14.4 ounces. And so we'll have to add that 0.35 gallons to the actual figure that is in this calculation. So that'll actually put us at uh, 0.61 gallons in lauder ton losses. And that includes the Herms coil because the way I do my batches, I actually run the HLT water through the Herms coil as I'm sparging. As I'm sparging. So um, that is actually going to make an adjustment for that. And then that will make sure that whenever I do my, my recipe calculations, that it will give me the proper amount of sparge water for the batch. And that pretty much does it. So if you'd like a copy of the spreadsheet that I used in this video, check out the description below. I'll have a link to our website as well as I also have a link for all of you to get, I think it's about $6 off of the retail price of Beersmith through a link that I have. It is an affiliate link and it you know gives me like maybe 75 cents if you guys buy it. But I just wanted to offer that up to you guys since you're watching the video, uh, try to give you a little bit of value with it. So we appreciate everybody watching the channel. Um, appreciate all the subscribers, all the likes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody that can benefit from it, share, share it with them. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.